Hey Canucks fans, it is Canucks game day. The Canucks are in New Jersey to take on the Devils and I have a few topics I want to talk about today. Really, I could do a topic, a video on each of these topics, but I'm going to combine them all into one for a quick, hopefully eight to 10 minute video, previewing tonight's game against the Devils, talking about Andre Kuzmenko, talking about Le Karamaki and the World Juniors, and then of course, uh, ending off with Logan Paul calling out the Canucks at SmackDown at Rogers Arena last night. Let's start with a preview of today's game. I say today, I say tonight, it's a 4 p.m. So it's going to start in the afternoon, 4 o'clock our time, end around 6.30 or 7, so in our in the evening time for us. But the most important thing we need to know is Carson Soucy looks like he'll be playing tonight. He got activated off of the injured reserve list, so my guess is that he comes in for Noel Juleson, who's actually played well, but Soucy is better than Juleson, and I think the other five defenders are also better than Juleson. So my guess, only guess, you go Hughes, Hironik, Zadorov, Myers, and you go Susie on the left, Cole on the right. They've played together before. Cole can go on the right. Actually, both of those guys can switch to the right. But I say put Cole back on the left where he was playing so well before he got hurt a couple of months ago. So again, Carson Susie activated off of the injured reserve. Ford Phil Giuseppe, who got injured a couple games ago, he is he's on injured reserve now, and that's why they kind of called up Linus Carlson. Carlson got in the lineup whereas Andre Kuzmenko got scratched. So we don't know what the lineup's going to look like tonight. Probably won't even know until closer to game time, in even half an hour before game time during the warm-ups, the, the, the warm-up skate. So we'll see. We'll see if Lafferty is still playing with PD and Mikheyev. We will see if Pia Suter stays with um, Brock Besser and JT Miller. We obviously know that Garland, likely Garland, Bluger, and Joshua stay together. So then do you go all Swedes again on the fourth line with Oman, Huglander, Carlson or does Kuzmenko draw in and if Kuzmenko draws in does he go straight to the top of the lineup once again I, I, I get once again Hughes Hironic Zadorov Myers Cole Susi uh, Susi and Cole that's what I would do and then I would still start Demko over to Smith today but we will certainly see what happens in a few hours looking forward to watching the game today on the New Jersey side Luke Hughes uh, Jack Hughes might not play there was uh, rumors that not even rumors there was news that earlier today his status for tonight's game was going to be uncertain or wasn't certain at the time. So as I record this, we don't know if Jack's going to be playing. It will still be a Hughes Bowl for sure with Quinn and Luke. We just don't know if Jack is going to be a part of the festivities tonight. Off the ice, uh, Donnie and Dolly and and Thomas Trance, actually it was Rick Dollywell and Thomas Trance reporting that Andre Kuzmenko, agent Dan Mielstein, they still want Kuzmenko here in Vancouver. They want it to work out. They recognize this is a bit of a bumpy patch. Um, I still think Kuzmenko is the type of player, at least this type of scorer, that you want in the playoffs. I'm not sure about his overall two-way game. So this is going to be a very intriguing story, along with the Pedersen contract, which is kind of being pushed to the background. I think the, the plight of Andre Kuzmenko may be the biggest Canucks story as we march towards the trade deadline and towards a playoff push. So let's see if Kuzmenko even plays today from a short-term basis, and then we'll see what happens on a long-term basis. Speaking of, well, not so much trade deadline, but when you think of trade deadline, you think of assets, acquiring assets, throwing in assets, whatever it may be. Three of the Canucks assets played very well at the World Junior Championship. Sweden lost 6-2 to the United States in the final but that Swedish team had three Canucks prospects, our, our first and second rounders from the past two seasons, and all of them playing very, very well. Jonathan Lekaramaki, our first round draft pick from 2022, he was the tournament MVP, which is awesome to see. Three goals, seven assists, 10 points, taking home the silver medal, but taking home the MVP and showing a lot of uh, firepower. He was dangerous every time he touched the puck. And not just the setting up on, on the left face-off dot and, and wiring pucks on the power play, creating, going to the net, making his teammates better, and just looking more uh, like a more versatile player and not just uh, a sniper type. So that's awesome. That is great news for Canucks fans and Jonathan Lekaramaki. Tom Villander, our first-round pick for this year, had a pretty steady uh, World Juniors overall. We saw some, some flashes of great skating, some good puck movement. His breakouts were okay. Um, but I, I, I remember scoring at least one goal, so I thought Volander played well. And DPD, not as flashy, but certainly um, uh, certainly going to be effective as a, as a more sturdy, bigger presence. Made some really good decisions with the puck as well. 
and uh, he'll he'll he just won't be as noticeable at least for the same offensive reasons that Valander is. Uh, so all three guys played very well. Congratulations to all of them for getting uh, obtaining the the silver medal. We'd love to see them get gold. And I bring that up when in terms of trade talk because. If the Canucks are going to somehow be buyers at the trade deadline, which if they're continuing on the top of the Pacific, they probably will be. Uh, obviously, you don't want to. You have to consider trading away prospects and picks. But I don't think you. I, I wouldn't trade any of these three guys, quite frankly. And I, I don't want the Canucks to trade now that I've seen how well they are developing and what they might do here in Vancouver. So I know trade deadline is still two months away, but uh, I, we may hear a bit more talk about uh, throwing in one of these prized prospects if it was to get one of the big fish uh, on the rental market, whether it's a Jake Gensel or uh, I'm just using that example, whoever it may be. So that's another thing to, to keep your eye on. And finally, uh, funny, I was I almost went to SmackDown last night, decided not to go watch it at home. It looked like a really good show. Crowd was really good. Um, some Bruce There It Is chants when Kevin Owens was fighting. And of course, uh, Logan Paul making the news because he's, he's one of the champions. He's the U.S. champion in WWE. Not to bore you with wrestling talk if you're not a wrestling fan. But it was funny. He basically, he, he, as the U.S. champ, he was wondering why Kevin Owens, a fan favorite from Montreal, Canadian, why a Canadian should have a chance to win the U.S. title and how unlikely it is that Kevin Owens would beat him for the title. And he basically said, it's just as unlikely as the Canucks winning the Stanley Cup. So as a bad guy, what they call a heel in wrestling, it's a way to get a cheap heat which means people just yelling and booing you and screaming you uh, screaming at you and i thought it was hilarious as a, as a canucks fan and as a wrestling fan and uh, it's it's probably the easiest way to get a crowd turned against you is you insult that uh, fan base's sports teams I and mean, they it's a it's a <laughs> tried and true um strategy and and trick and and logan paul did it to perfectly to a t last night and i had a lot of i saw a lot of people reacting to it on social media which is the whole point of, of a, a chirp like that. Aside from getting the fans to boo you, of course. So Canucks fans, so much to talk about there. We, we previewed the game. We talked about Andre Kuzmenko. We talked about Le Kermake, Volander, and DPD. And we talked about Logan Paul calling out the Canucks. What do you want to talk about? Put it in the chat. Uh, maybe, most importantly, give me your score prediction and first Canucks goal score. I'm still going Canucks 4-2. I know we're almost at the halfway point of the season, but the Canucks got to win a game 4-2 eventually. So that's still my prediction. And I'm going to go with uh, Brock Besser getting back on the scoring track uh, uh, with a scoring touch and potting the first goal for the Canucks. Give me your score prediction. Give me your first Canucks goal score. Thank you to my sponsors, Van City Experts Real Estate, Perform and Transform, Personal and Training Weight Loss. Thank you, legendary Lucas Gates, legendary Carol Bovelander, legendary Andrew Chang for your support as well and to franchise and to Hall of Fame members as well. Don't forget, uh, Hall of Fame and Legends, we are doing our group Zoom chat tomorrow night, Sunday night at 8.30 p.m. I'll send you the link as soon as I'm done posting this video. For everyone else, thank you for watching. On your way out, you can subscribe, you can like the video, you can leave a donation, you can become a member, you can upgrade your membership. And once again, give me your score prediction and your first Canucks goal score. Enjoy the game. Stay safe, stay healthy. Take care of yourselves and take care of each other. God bless and go Canucks go.